Today we're going to look at an exam type question for SQL where they're going to ask us to write SQL queries in Delphi so that it, it interacts with the database. The database that we've got is basically a newspaper database and it is uh, has two main tables. The first table is a clients table and that has details of any clients who want to put um, adverts into the classified section. So these are the details of our clients, their name, their telephone number and suburb. The other table that we've got is an adverts table, which will have information about the adverts that the clients put in. So we'll know what, if they've paid for it, the date it was placed, how many weeks it must run for, and so on. You'll notice here there's a client ID in this table, and this is the link between this table and the client table. So although we don't have the client name and their details here, we can access that because of the link between the two tables. This is a foreign key inside the adverts table. So let's look at question one. We must display the clients, so they must display in the display clients button, we must display all the fields, so that's every single one of the clients table sorted alphabetically according to the name of the client. So it must be sorted according to these names. So that's quite a nice easy one to start with. So let's go to our program. Here is our program, here's our interface. I'm going to double click on the all clients button and let's write the code there. They've written most of it for us. All we have to do is add in the SQL. So we start with a simple select statement. Because they specified all the fields, we just the easiest way to do that is just to put select star. And then we need to specify from which table are we getting that. And they mentioned that it's from the clients TB. Remember that you must, whenever you're referring to tables or fields in the database, you must spell it as it is in that database or the field name. So that's the name of the field. And then we need to sort it. And for that, we use the order bar clause and then we specify which field we are sorting it by so we said it was the client name now it didn't specify ascending or descending order so we can assume that it's ascending order and that means we don't even have to put in any specification there for D, for ascending if they did say in descending order then all we would have to do is our, wherever our field is or after we've got the name we just put in desc to make it descending but in this case, they didn't specify, so we don't need it. So if I just put that in, if I've spelt everything correctly, it should work. And there we go. And it is sorted according to the client name. Perfect. For the second question, 1.2, they want us to display all the fields in the adverts table as well as a field from the client's table and there's no special criteria. So we basically want all the fields from the one table and then one field from the other table. The moment we've got two tables in a query, we are going to have to have a joining condition. So although there's no criteria, it's not asking me based on a certain criteria, there will be a where clause which has criteria and that where clause will be what is the link between the two tables. And as we discussed earlier, that link is the client ID. The client ID is in both tables because the, this is what links the adverts table to the client table. So that will be what we will put in our where clause. So let's go to our code here. We're going to go to the second button and there we're going to write the code over there. So again, we're going to have a select statement and now we need to specify the fields that we want. Now normally you would have to specify adverts tb dot adverts id and all those individually. But because the names are completely different in both tables, we don't need to actually specify that. Um, only for the ones that are, if there's a field that's got the same name in both fields, would you have to specify from which table you are getting it from. So in this case, I'm just going to say advert ID. I'm going to specify the date placed. There are quite a few fields that we have to type in the weeks running. Just always make sure that you are typing them correctly. I'm hoping I'm typing them correctly and that I won't get any mistakes. Nine words. We need the paid field. We need the category. I think those are all of them from the adverts table. And the last one, we need the client name. And we get that information from the client table. So which two tables do we get this from? Well, obviously we get it from the adverts table as well as the client one. So I put a comma here and put the client TB. So I've mentioned both tables that we're getting from. Now lots of people stop at this point, but they've already given us a big tip that there's a WHERE clause here. And that WHERE clause is what is the link between those two tables. So I need to have a WHERE clause. And we know that in adverts TB there is an client ID. 
and that client ID is exactly the same or it's the linking factor between the adverts TB and the client's TB and so I'll specify that the client ID from adverts TB is the link from to the client's TB client ID sometimes those fields aren't called exactly the same but if they're a foreign key then that's what you basically specify where's the foreign key in the one connected to the other and hopefully if I've spelled everything correctly it'll run and work properly and there we go there's the link all the details and there we've got the client name from the client ID for the third question it's going to be a bit more trickier to do this one because they're actually asking us to get some input from the user we've got to input the name of the category and the number of the month as input so we've got to get that from the user and based on that information from the user then we will formulate our SQL so we're just displaying those three things but we've got to display it based on what category they specified and which month they mentioned okay so that's what we're basically looking for so first thing we have to do is get the input so if I go to my code there's my third button and yeah it's a big tip we've seen variables that are declared for us we've got code to add here as well as there that's also a big tip that we're going to need to do more than just the SQL statement so let's first do the the month num and we're basically going to get that from an input box so I'm going to use an input box um, component that will just pop up and ask them a question there are three strings that are needed for the input box the first string is like a little title that's put at the top of it the second string is what is placed like a question that you would place above the edit box and the third string is what would be in the edit box so I'm just going to call this month that's the title of my input box the second component is what's the question I'm going to ask so I'm going to say please because we must be polite please enter a number of the month and just to give them some heads up I'm going to say 1 to 12 it's good to be informative make sure that people are less likely to put in errors and then the last one is what it will be in the edit box in this case I want them to enter the value that they're going to put in there there's no default value so I'm rather just going to set it to the null string okay so that's the month or the number of the month the second one is the category so we will use an input box again now this input box will only be executed once the user has inputted the data in the first input box so let's say category is our heading what question could we ask let's be polite again please enter a category and then last but not least we'll put in a null type string okay so there's our two inputs so let's write our SQL we're gonna basically I'm gonna write it basically as if I've got static information for those variables and then I'll put those variables in last so we need to select data so we're gonna select what data do we need to select well it's the advert ID date placed and weeks running so let's go do that so it's the advert ID it's the date placed and the weeks running I hope you guys are checking my typing to see that I'm typed it all correctly and we are getting that all from the adverts table where now there is where we get our where clause now if the user had specified for example computers then I, all I would have to do is say category which is the name of the field where you get the category that must equal to and I put in double quotes computers like that yeah, probably should put that as a small O. So we use double quotes. And at the same time as well, we must make sure that the number of the month or the month that they specified is the same as the month in the date placed. Now the problem is the date placed is a date function. So how do I get the month just from the, the date placed? Well, we can use what's called a month function, which is just month. Right, let's put it in capital so we can see. And remember, I use the and because I want both of these conditions to be true. So I want the month of the date placed. So that will return just the month value out of the date place. And that must be the same as the value that the user inputs. Let's say it's 11 because it's going to be a number. So if I run it like that, then it should work for just this scenario. So let's just test to see if it works. All the code runs, run the category month. It asks me. Um, so we could say it's the 11th month or we can start anything we want because we're not actually using this input at this moment and I can put whatever I want in there it doesn't make a difference and there is a problem it says adverts ID has no default value 
that probably means I've spelled something incorrectly. So let's just close this quickly. Let's have a look. Uh, it's probably advert RD. Hopefully everything else will be spelled correctly. It'll probably tell us if it isn't. So we said just put nothing in here again. Nothing in. And there we go. So we've got the information going correctly. The only problem is it's not actually using the information that I gave as input. So we're just going to change it now. So now I've just got to change it, but now I've got to insert Delphi code here. Now the easy part is this part at the end here, which is the 11. All I have to do is instead of saying the 11, then I simply add on, as a string, I'm adding on the month num. So whatever's in the the, the month num variable, the one that we specified over there, will then just be added on. So that's easy. This one with computers is a little bit more tricky because we've got these double quotes over here. So I'm actually going to delete computers and I'm going to put a quote or end the string there and start the next string over there between the two double quotes. So this is one string. If you look over there, there's one string which ends by that. And this is another one that we're going to add on. And then at the end there, we add the another up. So in between this, I'm going to add something. What am I going to add? I'm going to add the variable that the user put in the category, which is cat. So I'll just put the cat in there. So it'll take whatever's in the category variable, put double quotes around it and insert it basically inside the string and then take the month num and add it on to the end of the string and then execute it. So let's see, hopefully it works. So if I do the exact same, I should get the same results if I type in computers now, or not computers because this is the month, so 11. And if I say computers, and there we go, we get the same data. The advantage now is that when I run this button, I can be more specific with, with what type of information I give the user or give the program.